In this video, we want to identify each zero and the multi multiplicity of that zero for this given function, and also determine the maximum number of turning points that this function could have. Um, all right, so to find each zero, we can just look at our polynomial function in factored form. And remember that whatever our factor is, if we just set it equal to zero, that's going to be one of our zeros. So x plus four, if that's equal to zero, then we get a zero of negative four. So that's our first zero. Uh, for x plus one, if we set that zero, uh, equal to zero, we get negative one as a zero. And then x minus two, if we set that equal to zero, we get positive two as a zero. Uh, now, multiplicity just means how many times each zero occurs. So it's basically um, the exponent of whatever our factor is, right? So if we have x plus 4 to the second power, this 2 here, that's the multiplicity of our 0 of negative 4. So negative 4 has a multiplicity of 2. Um, x plus 1 is to the fourth degree, so negative 1 has a multiplicity of 4. And then x minus 2, it doesn't look like it has a power, but really it's being raised to the first, so its multiplicity is 1. Now, when you're finding, uh, when you're looking at multiplicities, the multiplicities can actually help us quite a bit uh, in determining the degree of our polynomial. If all of our factors are linear factors, meaning the power inside of our factor is just one, then we can find the degree of our polynomial by adding our multiplicities. So this, when we add, would be seven. So this is a seventh degree polynomial. Now why is that important? Well that is going to help us determine the maximum number of turning points. So to figure out the maximum number of turning points it's just uh, n minus 1. So it's just the degree of our polynomial minus 1. So this polynomial function has at most 6 turning points. It has at most 6 turning points. Now it's not saying that it will have 6 but that's the most that it could have. Um, now, what impact do zeros and multiplicity have on our graph? So to take a look at that, let's actually take a look at the graph of this polynomial function. So we're going to go over here to Desmos to take a look at the graph of this polynomial function. So here we have the graph of the polynomial function that we were looking at in the last example. And we can see that our intercepts are plotted here. Um, and in this, we see that uh, negative 4, our intercept negative 4, 0 has a multiplicity of 2. Uh, negative 1 has a multiplicity of 4. And our intercept at 2 has a multiplicity of 1. So how do the multiplicities affect our graph? Well. In the short of it, if you have an even multiplicity, what's going to happen is it's going to cause your graph to just touch the x-axis. So as your graph comes up to the x-axis, it will touch at your intercept and then curve back either down or up depending on the direction that it's coming from. So we can see that both here at negative 4 and at negative 1, both of those have an even multiplicity. So even multiplicities cause our graph to just touch the x-axis. If it's an odd multiplicity, like we have at x minus 2, it uh, means that our graph will cross through the x-axis. So we can test this, right? If we make uh, x plus 1 maybe to the third power, well, now we can see this still has an even multiplicity, so it touches here at negative 4. And then it comes back and it crosses through here at negative 1 with the odd multiplicity. And then it comes back up and touches here at 2 uh, with the odd, or sorry, not touches, it crosses through here at 2 with the odd multiplicity. Whoops, here we are. So you can see that the odd multiplicities, it's going through our x-axis, and then at the even multiplicity, it touches. So that's the effect that multiplicities has on our graph. Even multiplicities cause our graph to just touch, like we see here at negative 4, and odd cause them to cross through, like we see here at negative 1 and 2 after we made this change.